A fun edit using Luminar 4.2. In this video, and I'm going to show you a fun edit with Luminar 4.2, and we're going to use the new AI augmented sky feature as well within this. I'm not using any of the other AI tools, as you'll notice. I could have done it, but I thought I'd just make a quick video, quick edit for you as well. The images that I use, excepting the spacesuit, uh, are all found within the libraries within Luminar 4.2. The spacesuit itself I purchased from a stock site because I want to do a series of images using it. So that's a thing to consider if you haven't got access to, or in this case, a spacesuit. Uh, you can go and purchase images as well that you can use and they're licensed and you'll understand the license as the contract comes through. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, although this is just a fun edit, I'm going to talk you through my thought process while I'm doing it. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to add a sky replacement and the sky I'm going to add here is within Luminar itself and it's bright blue sky one and there we have it. The first thing for this take out the horizon blending to deal with anything down here and I'm going to take the horizon position down as well to around there. If I relight the scene we get quite a vivid blue which I'm not a big fan of so I am not going to relight the scene. I'm going to adjust the sky global. I'm just looking around and checking the edges just to make sure and I'd go into advanced settings. I'm not going to defocus the sky or indeed flip the sky. I like this break here and it's also going to make up the rest of my image. I know I'm going to put a moon in here so that's what's going to happen with this. I'm going to take the sky temperature down though which you see has a slight effect down here. For this I am going to get into colour. Straight away I am going to pull the saturation back. Then I am going to pull the blues back. I am not the greatest a fan of a bright blue sky although I like the sunny weather, it's just for these edits. I'm going to pull that back to around there. Everything's taken care of around here so I'm only watching this area. Next I am going to get and pull the yellows back. I'm going to take the saturation right out of the yellows and the luminance as well. I'm going to get into the greens. Pull the saturation out of the greens. Not too far because as you see there's a slight magenta casking down here. To around there, take the luminance down to around there, go into the teal, saturation, luminance, and I might even be able to pull the saturation out of the teal and I have. It's slightly affecting it. There is a there is a slight colour shift, but for this it's a fun edit. I'm not going to go into too much bother with that one. Okay. Next thing I am going to do is I am going to add a new image layer. And the new image layer I'm adding is an old, and that's even a screenshot, I don't even have this one anymore, of myself. And as you can see, it fits the aspect ratio of the document that's going into. The document it's going into is a 16 by 9. Layer transform. And I am going to scale that down to where I think is about right and it looks a bit there. The next thing I'm going to lock that aspect ratio so that I can take it down in size. Right my thought process here this image here has to fit inside here without the hair touching the top so it'll sit around that area there. I'm also going to watch the shoulders so that they line up properly and also for the breathing apparatus or mic whatever it is within this it's around that area. I've raised the head. I'm just telling you my thought process while I'm doing this. I've actually raised my head within the suit. So therefore, instead of that sitting in front of you there, you're going to be raising to the side of it. So that's how I'm looking at these images as I'm putting them together. I know it's all in your head, but it's worth thinking about when you're doing them. It'll make the images slightly better for you. So I'm following this line here roughly. That one's out but it may be okay for this. 
So I'll take it down slightly just as well. Because we don't want to see the full chin and everything. Right, I'll leave it at that. I'll click done. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the mask using a brush. And I'm going to paint in what I need to see. And I'm not painting too much here. I'm only painting what I think I need to see. Right, that might actually be enough. It might actually work just at that. We've been fortunate with this one. Now we're going to the eraser. And I'm going to take the eraser down because I'm going to get rid of some areas first. Opacity still at 100. I'm going to make sure none of the skin tones affect this area here. And from that, I'm going to take out this bit of the chin. I'm also going to take out the hair and everything here. But when I'm doing this next part, I'm going to drop the opacity around 50% just to test it. And if I click in there, because we want the helmet to blend through as well, I'm going to take out some of that there. And I'm going to definitely taking out this area here, but how much I'm unsure at the moment tiny bit in there as well. I might even add some back in. But at a lower opacity, 29 will do fine. So you can see where we've got to so far. I'm going to take that bit back out. So you can see where we've got to so far in a relatively short space of time. Yep, quite happy with that. Next thing we've got to think of is the fact that that's a reflective surface and the head is behind that surface. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the saturation, then I'm going to turn down the opacity of it. So I'm going to go in here because we've added it as an image layer and I'm going to pull the saturation back to about there. That looks okay for this. I can push the blues if I want and the cyan just to intensify this here. But we don't want it to be intensified too much. That's the thing. We've got to be very, very careful here. I am going to even pull back the luminance then. And I'll go in and I'll push the saturation and pull back the luminance slightly. Yep, that looks okay for me. Because this is an added image layer. I've got control over the opacity of it and I want some of this to come back over through the actual face itself. So if we do that, 85 to around about there, it looks a bit better. So you can see that that's meant to be in there. It is just a fun image and I'm rushing through this as well, but it just shows you what you can do in a relatively short space of time. Next thing I am going to do is I am going to stamp these layers together. Okay, now that we've created a stamped layer from the images, I am going to add an augmented sky and of course I'm going to add the moon with this one. So moon one, and I'll drop in there. I'm going to place the object, take it up, and each time I'm doing this, I'm thinking about the atmosphere and the feel of the entire image. So I could leave that there or I could rotate it round to there. This is a personal choice. It's totally and utterly up to you. I could take it down so that some of the clouds are coming through as well. I could increase the size of it and leave it there. The one thing that I am going to do though is I am going to make sure that in the advanced settings I defocus it slightly because I don't want the moon surface to be as sharp as this image here. But it's just subtly about there. That's fine with that. I can also pull back the amount and blend it into this, the atmosphere as well. And I'm quite happy with that. For the fi finishing touches for this, I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And it's going to be looks. And it's going to be my favourite because I find Camden works really well with the blues. That's why it's one of my favourite looks. And I'm going to add Camden in. And you get a more, slightly more cinematic look with this one. 
I'm also going to check in here by adding a new, I'll turn the looks off, I'm also going to check by adding a new adjustment layer whether a vignette would work with this image. So I'm going to get into Essentials, turn colour off, jump to Vignette and I'm going to bring a vignette in quite strongly. And it does work with this one. So that's it, that's the final image. Click Apply. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it was fun to watch just putting an image together relatively quickly to get the end result. As you notice I didn't use the AI Augmented Sky or any of the other tools, I only stuck to looks and a few other techniques. So it just shows you can bring an image together relatively quickly using limited resources in this case. I could have gone on to use AI structure and the likes and tweak the image even further. But as I say, it was just a fun edit just to let you see and hopefully inspire some ideas. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see more, please check them out in the channel below. And if you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching and stay safe.